Okay, so here I am. <clears throat> I have my beanie on because it's first thing in the morning and it's absolutely freezing. <clears throat> so no apologies there. Just a shame it's not the old man hat. <clears throat> um, so last week I posted a video which um, uh, just kind of <clears throat> explained where I'm at at the moment in terms of you know, being a bit busy and struggling to get out the um, the posts and blogs and things as I would do normally. Um, so this is really kind of the the first um, the first attempt at uh, doing something that's uh, perhaps a little bit quicker for me to do, but still allows me to um, <clears throat> to kind of share share some stuff with you, share some thoughts with you. Um, and I'm going to start with some stuff just in relation to the changes that I've made. Uh, I've got a kind of series of things in my mind um, that I want to kind of share with you with regards to that. And then going forward, it will just be you know really. Um, stuff that kind of I'm thinking about or stuff that's relevant to what's going on in my life at the time <clears throat> in terms of like mindset challenges and uh, sort of personal development and coaching related things um, that people might find helpful. So I thought it actually might be quite good to start with you know, in terms of making making that change from the role I was in. Um, I thought I would just reflect for a few minutes on the role of the pandemic um, in it because I think um, I don't know, has anyone ever declared that the pandemic's actually over? I'm not 100% sure, or whether we've just switched from pandemic pandemic to endemic, I don't know. But I thought I would just reflect on the role that the pandemic actually had on my decision to leave the job I was in. <clears throat> and, you know, for anyone, not even just in healthcare, but working, you know, or just living, I guess, on this world, it was a you know, really kind of unsettling and strange time, but being like one of only two senior doctors in a small department you know we were attending meetings after meetings after meetings kind of planning for this to happen but there, you know there was always this real kind of sense that oh well you know it's not going to be us it's not going to be us tempered with a little bit of what if it does what if it does so yeah that that was a bit bizarre and I remember things ramped up quite significantly around the time where you know you were looking at scenes of what was going on in Italy in terms of how badly the the hospitals were overwhelmed there and there was a real growing sense of this is you know um this, this is kind of a flash forward into our future this is what it's going to be like for us and some of the things that we were having to plan for were quite scary and so it was quite difficult to kind of hold it together because you were kind of in a in a position where people were looking to you for reassurance and advice about what what was going to happen and then you were kind of fighting against your own human urges of, you know, actually, what is going to happen? I don't know. Um, or, you know, am I going to have to deal with a lot of people dying? Am I going to have to deal with friends dying, family dying? You know, what, what are we going to do? You know, how am I going to go to work if my, you know, my kids haven't got someone to look after them and my other half still has to go to work? It was a really strange and unsettling time. And then actually kind of getting <clears throat> through the time when... Um, when COVID kind of landed in the nearby area, it was also a bit odd. And I, you know, I think it was it was different from from what we expected to happen. You know, we we thought Italy was on the horizon, but obviously there was, I think, with hindsight, the the Italy thing allowed us to, uh, you know, kind of spurred people into actually planning properly, and kind of affected the way that people were behaving. Um, so you know, there wasn't quite the overwhelm certainly locally of our system as we thought there might be you know the critical care system was stretched you know beyond belief um but in terms of like emergency departments you know pe people stayed away but people stayed away inappropriately so it was a really bizarre time where we were just seeing people you know all the people we saw had something wrong with them and sort of you know interspersed daily we would be getting people coming through who were already very sick with covid and you could kind of you, know, you get that kind of sense of disheartenment because you could kind of see the stormy time they were going to have ahead of them you know or actually you know a lot of kind of older frailer people where you, you know you just knew that critical care wasn't necessarily going to be the right option for them and you know that actually this was going to be their last trip to hospital and then all you know all the associated heartaches with you know relatives not being allowed into the hospital and stuff it was just you know it's a really kind of strange time but you kind of had that there's that sense of hope and optimism a little bit you know, everyone was pulling it together it felt like everything was possible and then we kind of you know fast forward a lot to you know that kind of went on and on and on and we had waves and uh, normal activity kind of went back to normal but then a lot of other things didn't um 
so certainly from an emergency department perspective, we just had a lot of people who were just ex- you know, were expecting the system to work normally, but actually, you know, the system was still in a bit of a war footing. And um, yeah, we just were left with a bit of a difficult situation to, to manage where everything, you know, a, a system that had just been under strain for so many years um, had just been hit with this, you know, meteor. Um, and then, you know, it, it just kind of laid bare <clears throat> how stretched the entire system was. So, you know, you just need to pick up a pick up a reputable newspaper if there is such a thing to read about all the many reasons why that is. But, you know, then you just get left almost, you know, in a, in the part of the, the system that I work in where the doors are always open, you know, and I, you can't really fault people for, for going looking for help when they think they need it. You know, that's certainly the attitude that I adopted as a, you know, as a more senior doctor. I can't fault people for worrying about what might be wrong with them, um, you know, and, and pitching up where they know that there's a chance they'll get it seen. But, you know, ultimately we just had, you know, queues at the front door, queues of ambulances outside, nowhere to put people within the hospital, nowhere out of the hospital for people to be discharged to, um, for community services completely, uh, you know, beyond saturation point and just a bit of a kind of impossible situation. And, you know, we're all used to things being bad, but this was, you know, this was a new level of bad. And this was also the kind of bad where, you know, it's not just a winter thing. It gets bad for a few months and then it's better. And, you know, you start planning for the next year. This was a, I can't see any sign of this getting better anytime soon. So that kind of brings with it a real sense of powerlessness and hopelessness. Um, And that was really kind of ultimately what eventually pushed me to, you know, there's a lot of kind of political things, but it was all all kind of environmental thing you know it's all generated by the environment that our pe- people are working in um but yeah ultimately you know it just got to the point where i was like as i spoke about in my last video i'm just going to make myself really unhappy and unhealthy i need to i need to get out <clears throat> you know for my own well-being and so that i can try and put some boundaries in place and um uh yeah, yeah. So just to, it was the boundaries more than anything else. I just felt really challenged by the fact that I couldn't have any boundaries, um, and that was always really difficult because you know I went into this job many years ago uh, as a doctor, kind of you know aware that this was part of my job. But then I, I was always just the way my brain works. It's nice to be able to compartmentalize things. So outside of a major incident, I knew that you know the only times that I might be called upon to go back in would be like. Um, you know, if it was on call, which you know I've I've done in a um in anyway certainly in my first job as a consultant, I would do shifts on call, but then I would know that that was the kind of compartment of time where I could get called in, and I would find that you know I used to find being on call quite unsettling. I didn't never slept very well when I was on call, but at least I knew that that was dedicated time. Um, and then there was times when I wasn't on call where I knew I wasn't going to get called, and I could kind of relax and and have boundaries in my life, but. The way the system was working in my, in my last role, I just didn't have that. You know, literally, I would be one WhatsApp message away from, um, you know, kind of mindset meltdown, really. You know, the sense of guilt for leaving and, you know, just a real sense of being stuck in the middle and just, you know, being powerless. And it did, it did get to that point where I was just, just felt hopeless about the whole thing. And I don't mean that to sound dramatic. And yes, I am fine. That was just how I felt. So that that was kind of ultimately what what kind of prodded me in that direction. So it's you know I'm sure it's going to be a period of my career that you know in my life that I'm going to look back on you know, forever more. I'm sure. But yeah, for me, <clears throat> it was just that kind of recognition that I couldn't stay and I had to go. So that was really the kind of roller coaster of emotions of the pandemic and its contribution to why I ultimately decided um, to leave. Um, let me know if that resonates with you. Um, let me know if you've got a sort of similar story or even a completely different one. You know, I'm really up for hearing people's stories about what it was like for them and sort of how it changed their outlook on their lives and careers. Okay, speak to you soon.